everyone. Today I'm doing an unboxing and reviewing and demonstrating a couple of items that might not seem like something you would expect to see on my channel, but I promise you that it is relevant. <laughs> so I have today here the Arteza, this is 11 by 14 uh, magnetic dry eraser boards. They come two in a pack and I'll show you everything that comes in this uh, in a second. But what is seems more boring and yet is even more interesting to me are these uh, dry eraser lap boards. So this actually comes in a pack of 16, which is great if you're a teacher, you want to use this uh, for your class. And I'll show you what I have in mind for these. So I'm going to open everything and we'll take a look at what's inside. So in the set, uh, we get two of these boards. So there's cardboard cardboard in the back and then the uh, dry erase board in the front. And they're both the same. So I'll show you what's included in this. You get the two boards, 16 markers, four magnets, two pen holders, two magnetic erasers, 16 double-sided tape, and 16 magnets for mounting two boards. So there are two of each color, beautiful colors. So you can see them here. Also the boring, <laughs> red, blue, and black. And there's the eraser. Oh, okay. The eraser is also magnetic. And then we have these cute magnets. So the reason that I ordered uh, this particular one, I'll talk about the 16 um, boards in a bit, is mostly for myself but also for my kids. I have my two girls, especially Lily, the, the one who's almost four, uh, they love to draw. Lily in particular, she draws all the time and we have piles and piles of papers with her artwork. And while I love that, and I keep uh, some of it, I don't keep all of it, but I keep some of it, I really wanted something that was a little bit more, less wasteful, let's say it like that. And especially for a kid that can draw like 20 faces in one sitting without a problem, uh, I think something like this would be really, really fun for her. And uh, hopefully I can get her also to show you <laughs> how she uses this. Uh, so these are also magnetic. I really love how everything is easily stored together. That's another thing. We have piles and piles of stuff and I would really like a good storage system is very, very tempting for me. So this is what you would get in one set. I'm going to give one board to Ella, my eldest, and she's in the fifth grade and I want to mount this on her, uh, she has like a magnetic wall uh, on her desk. So I'll show you a picture, but basically I'm just following the instructions on the cover. So these are double-sided and there are eight, so four for each board. I'm going to stick them down and then take four magnets and it said now I get it <laughs> it says tape side so the instructions say to 
Attach the tape side of the magnets to the foam tape on all four corners and sides. So now I'm going to remove the backing and attach the tape side. The instructions say to let this wait, uh, to let this sit for an hour, I guess, for the um, glue to settle a bit. And then this is very light, so I'm really not worried that it's going to follow anything. It's super um, lightweight. And I was also thinking sometimes when we sit together over her homework, uh, I always need a scrap piece of paper and I would much rather use something like this that doesn't create any waste. I'm going to let this sit and then I'm going to put it in her room and hopefully she'll be very happy to see this present. Moving on to these 16 dry erase lap boards and I'll show you how this comes. I'm opening this with you. So there are again these clips. You can put them like this and it holds the marker. So we have those and then we have the boards. Uh, as I said, this is a pack of 16. So these are 9 by 12 inches and they are, as you can see, they are uh, simpler than the other ones. They don't have a frame or anything. They are much lighter and kind of easier to hold. And the way that I want to use them is for watercoloring. So I'll show you what I mean. I actually saw this. I just want to give, you know, credit where credit is due. I saw these being used for this purpose in a Daniel Donaldson class that I took years ago and I was searching for something like this years ago. I remember this and I couldn't find anything that was, you know, super simple and just like this until now and then i saw it on the arteza website and i said okay i have to get it now and even though i work a lot in a journal i still sometimes work on single sheets and i'm just going to show you a few ways that you can use this I'm very excited to finally have these accessible, affordable, and as I said, if you teach uh, classes, then this would be really great to purchase for your students as well. Or you could do like a group purchase with a few other people and then get, uh, you know, one or two for each of you. Uh, because they do only come in those uh, large packs. So I want to show you two ways of mounting this on to the board. Now obviously one way is with tape and we'll do that also but the other way is to to adhere this with water. So oh great my brush was dirty. Oh well live and learn. So what you want to do is to put a very generous layer of water on your paper and now we are going to flip it you want to make sure everything is really really wet now we're going to flip it and the water is going to help it stay in place so of course you're going to use clean water uh, what is this good for? Well, first of all, it saves us from that pesky tape <laughs> business. <laughs> Another reason that I love to use uh, sketchbooks. So you want to make sure that everything is really, really wet. And we're also going to just wipe the edges and now we have a piece of wet watercolor paper so you can see this is nicely stuck down and we can paint on this 
we can create some really nice washes. Because everything is wet, so the color will flow. You want to take your time when you're doing this. This is not uh, a technique that I use often painting wet in wet but it is a very very popular common technique so I just wanted to show you how easy it is to do with these boards and you can move it around you can let the color flow and you can have fun <laughs> with this so if you're more of a classical watercolor painter, then you're probably familiar with doing washes for skies and scenery and all those things. And if you're an enthusiast that likes to play, this is a very user-friendly way. And now I'm just getting sucked into the magic of watercolors, but look how <laughs> beautiful <laughs> it's granulating here. So if you want to do wet on wet techniques, you have this great uh, window of time to do that before things dry because the back is also wet this will give you some time so you have a longer window i'm sorry i'm getting <laughs> i'm getting sucked in by the magic of watercolor and that's it and that's really the main reason that i wanted these just because it's so easy now of course you can also use my paper here is rather large but if especially if you're working on smaller papers, if you're a card maker and you use smaller sizes, uh, you could also mix colors on this. So this can also be your palette. You could squeeze, you could uh, mount it a little bit more to the side and then really just squeeze your paint straight on to this. So really user-friendly way of having fun with watercolors. I thought I would speed this part up just so that it's uh, less boring <laughs> for all of us. And I just wanted to show you the, I would say probably the more common traditional way of using this. So I'm just using a Tim Holtz Ranger piece of watercolor paper and I taped it down with some washi. I tried to apply a little bit of pressure to the edges so that I get clean edges but in this case it's not really relevant because I'm not going to watercolor the whole surface I'm just going to paint some flowers in the center and I'm following a tutorial by I want to say CC designs so I want to give her credit for that she made these beautiful super simple florals and I thought it would be perfect for this video not to get into something too complicated but still show you how easy it is to use this. So uh, for these purposes, I really wanted these dry boards and they work uh, really, really well. Uh, you can see because they are white and non-porous, you can kind of test out the colors before. Now the paint does bead up on it, but I don't care so much. Uh, I wouldn't recommend sanding it down or something like that, which is what is usually uh, advised to do with palettes because I don't know how that would affect this. I haven't tried it myself. If you want to be brave, go ahead and let me know how that turned out. But uh, I think for my purposes, it worked really, really well. Uh, just, you know, to test out the color. It's another thing that a lot of people... Uh, do with paper and you can absolutely do that with a scrap of paper but again we're creating more scraps and I don't know about you but I am drowning in scraps so <laughs> if I can avoid that <laughs> I'm happy to do so and uh, yeah it's a really great tool for making cards or working on 
um, I guess smaller and medium sized pieces of watercolor. It is 9 by 12 and I'm not sure if there are other sizes. I will check and link you to this, uh, the one that I show you in this video. But it worked really, really well and I'm really happy about it. Especially I have to say with the first technique that I showed you, the one uh, where you wet the whole paper because that was a lot of fun and those really watery washes allow for even more granulation and you probably know by now that I really like that. So a bit of mix of topics here, dry erase boards and watercolors, but what are you going to do? I w just want to show you how easy cleanup is. I know there are uh, special cleaners, but water worked perfectly and it looked brand new. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you again soon in another one. Have a great day. Bye.